advanced passenger train. Despite its checkered history, even today it looks new and exciting. Five years ago, APT broke the British speed record by traveling at 138 miles per hour. Four years later, it was completely withdrawn from passenger service, beleaguered by technical and commercial problems. As a train, was it just too different? The normal approach within the railway engineering department was that of evolutionary design so that uh, only one or perhaps two things would be changed at a time. The major emphasis really on the APT compared with the conventional approach was that we would make a, a fairly large step forward and that was implicit of course in the specification for the train. But how do you develop an innovation like this? And what lessons have British Rail learned in the 20 years since the idea was first proposed? We're going to look at the research and development involved in producing the APT, how the project was managed, how that management structure has since evolved, and how BR are planning for their new fast train, the IC225. We must bear in mind that under the relationship we now have with industry, it's very much up to the contractor to design and underwrite his design. So that doesn't mean to say that he's obliged to pick up everything that we may have learnt on the APT. On the other hand, any contractor would be a fool to ignore some of the important lessons that we've learnt, particularly things to do with unsprung mass effects on the track and uh, transmission uh, lessons and so on. So all the technology that we've learnt, particularly on the traction side from APT, is always available to those manufacturers if they so wish. APT technology might still be of use to BR, but if the business policy is now to contract out design and manufacture of a train like this, how does BR see the role of in-house research? Part of the research programme is, in effect, funded by the board as a strategic programme. And that is um, taking a longer view, not expecting the businesses to take an immediate interest, but um, to generate the new ideas for the future. We in the business are tending to look for uh, pretty early returns on our money. Uh, we're wanting innovation quickly because we're faced with the threat of uh, competition. Um, and yet, on the other hand, of course, uh, the research are looking uh, very long term. I think it's possible to bring these things together. Uh, but again, you have to underwrite the long term things. And after all, a good business will want to survive. And the one way it can survive is to have a long term R&D strategy. But I uh, stress that that itself ought to be underwritten by the business. So what are the lessons to be learned from it all? A very clear lesson from APT is that you do need to have dedicated resources with a very clear focus of responsibility and authority at the project leadership level. And there are inherent dangers in trying to do projects of this nature by generally disseminating them in a whole variety of uh, areas throughout a large organization. The way to handle it in the organization is to get top-down commitment from the chairman downwards to the product or the project. If the project managers and project engineers believe that the board are committed and that other functional directors and so on recognize that and the role that you've got to play in it, then you're going to have more chance of success. There are different views about why APT didn't become a successful passenger train. Some would blame organizational and managerial problems. Others say that the whole project was just too complex. Uh, in total, I think that is true, given the uh, resources that uh, are available within the railway and its ability to, to manage a large-scale development with many parallel developments going on at the same time. So yes, this is one of the reasons why, in fact, we uh, reduced the project 
down to the essential elements in the end, which led in fact to the IC225 project. So any project in its early days of such a novelty as the APT in an environment such as British Rail, where not everyone had accepted this top-down commitment. In fact, there wasn't top-down commitment, commitment if the truth was really known. Therefore, you had isolated interest taking a subjective view whether the APT was good or not for British Rail. Those are not the core ingredients for successful development. It's quite surprising how APT actually emerged despite the organisation. We have a particular problem on the railway that we can't go and do our development in some private test track somewhere or up in the sky where nobody can see us. Whatever we do is really done in public and so every failure that we have is uh, likely to be reported as a failure and uh, every success that we have is not likely to be reported as a success. Obviously, since APT did not materialize into regular passenger traffic, in that sense, one has to say that we failed to meet what the long-term objectives were. Nevertheless, from a technical point of view, there has been a very considerable achievement in APT that has now been applied to the design of the future generations 